What happens when you start beef with a rapper who is demonic, ruthless, and as cold-blooded as NBA Youngboy? More often than not, starting a beef with Contrell can go much deeper than rap, and in some cases, can lead to death. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're gonna be talking about what happened to the NBA Youngboy victims. Starting off with a rapper named G Money, who literally lost his life shortly after saying some disrespectful things about YB's sister. Growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Youngboy was trying to break into the rap game ever since he was a teenager. And one of his first ever collaborations just happened to be with G Money. A rapper who repped the TBG crew, Youngboy was initially under his wing and was even seen wearing a hoodie repping the crew back in some of his older videos. Back then, G was basically his mentor, but something went wrong between them, which led Youngboy abandoning TVG to launch his own rap crew, Never Broke Again. In an interview with Say Cheese TV, G talked about how Youngboy changed once he became famous. However, the core problem between them was related to the older rapper having a sexual relationship with Youngboy's sibling. He met by the sister too though. About his sister? Yeah, I had fucked her a long time ago. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, he's mad about that. He wasn't really tripping on it back then, though, you know what I'm saying? He'd be calling me Big Brother and shit, you hear me? I guess he just let that famous shit get to his head. Now he feel like he just this new nigga. Whoever he's supposed to be, whoever he As always, NBA Youngboy doesn't let anyone speak on an issue pertaining to him without clapping back. First, Youngboy responded simply on an Instagram live, where he was clearly ready for all the smoke. <laughs> what you say? Huh? I'm about beeping. What is real Before then going on to mention the incident on his song called Poor One. Remember smoking weed with your little brother? Matter of fact, nigga. To call you my big brother then you did some fire shit and had sex with my sister shortly after they had been throwing shots back and forth online g money was killed when he was shot in the head while leaving a recording studio on dallas drive baton rouge now some may say that this was all just one big coincidence however when you take into consideration that young boy's associate nba pop was the one who was indicted for the murder, it definitely makes you think twice. Additionally, instead of offering condolences, Youngboy instead decided to celebrate in songs like Danger. I'm on my top and with the shit, I put that burner on them, yeah. Shoot them in the shit, like the last gorilla, nigga. By mentioning the last gorilla, Youngboy made it crystal clear who he was referring to. After all, TBG stood for Top Boy Gorilla, and with their leader gone, Youngboy was happy to mock the crew during their time of mourning. But this didn't mean that every member of the crew was just going to take it lying down. Fredo Bing was also part of TBG, and he was really close to G Money. Not only did he make an entire song titled Dog Gone about him, but he even told Vlad TV that when G Money passed away, he was so upset that he cried while he was in jail. It was the closest friend I, I, I had besides my first best friend, but we got closer, you feel me? While behind bars, Fredo reportedly attacked Youngboy's older brother, and the police, worried he might seek revenge, believed this led to G's passing. This incident actually prevented Fredo from being released on the day he was supposed to get out of jail. There's a common belief that G Money was only in Baton Rouge on the day he died, specifically because Fredo was supposed to be released from jail that day. However, Fredo's bond hearing got delayed to a later date, leading some people to think that if Fredo had been released as planned, G Money might have not lost his life. As for Youngboy and Fredo, the two used to be cool. In fact, Youngboy actually appeared in one of Fredo's first ever music videos. But once she money was kid and Bang got out of prison, the relationship between them soured. And when he learned that they would be dropping projects on the same day, Fredo sent some shade to Youngboy, writing, Guess me and my son dropping together on an Instagram story post. When you're dealing with someone as hot-headed as Youngboy, calling him your son isn't a great idea. Soon, he was cussing him out on live, dissing dead ops and issuing threats. You a bum, you Go dig all three of your brothers up with your scary You a Stop running from me. I ain't in no competition with you. Stop writing me. You a yeah, You ain't no You won't be like me. You write me all day. You a Unsurprisingly, Fredo clapped back, throwing shade of his own. Somebody go help your brother out, bro. He angry, dog. He angry. Talking about potting and shit. It ain't like I'm on this talking about fat boy and that extra, extra large coffin he got. You hear me? Or, or, or Professor X, how y'all gotta push his half 
this round. I don't, I'm not on it talking about that. I, I said I was saying my ass near. From there, the two kept throwing subliminal shots back and forth on wax. Thankfully, avoiding things tipping over into violence. However, there was an incident where a fan of Youngboy foolishly tried to taunt Fredo and his crew, which resulted in the fan getting beaten up. <laughs> Since then, Fredo eventually opened up about what happened between them and basically suggested the whole thing was blown out of proportion. I personally don't got a problem with it. It's more of, like, remember I was telling you about people don't f with people and they in the main people ear yeah, type of s. And motherfuckers don't know how to be grown and be a man and talk for themselves type shit. I don't have a problem with him. We just don't f with each other. Whatever happened, it's clear any idea that Fredo would ever be competing with YB in terms of sales are long gone. But the Baton Rouge beef doesn't stop there, as another local rapper that Youngboy had a feud with was Kevin Gates. At first, YB and Gates were cool, to the point that they had created absolute banger hit songs together, such as the song TTG and I Am Who They Say I Am, which combined for nearly 200 million views on YouTube alone. And Kevin Gates even got a tattoo of Contrail on his shoulder during Youngboy's come up, Gates took him under his wing and actually helped him to broker a deal with Atlantic that he'd eventually end up regretting. Although Kevin felt an immense connection to what Youngboy was going through. I saw myself. When I see him, I see myself. Mm -hmm. It ain't, you're not aggressive. It's just when you go through great pain and great hurt, it makes you aggressive. It makes you put the wall up. And that's me, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's who I was. I was that individual at one time in my life. Young boy clearly felt differently. And by the sounds of it, the issue was that Gates basically wanted a finder's fee for helping to set up his deal with Atlantic. And on the song Story of OJ Top's version, Young boy issued some pretty serious threats aimed at Gates for wanting to take a percentage of his income. Man, think he gets a percent from me, allow him to allow someone else to pay me, don't be. By now, Kevin Gates is a family man and is focused on peace rather than causing anyone any kind of hardship. Because Youngboy is so many years his junior, he basically sees him as a little sibling. So in an interview with academics, he revealed that he'd done the mature thing and let it go as Youngboy needed a friend, not another enemy. Wish I could put my arms around him right now. That shit killed me to see him suffer. I wish I could just put my arms around him. Right now, I'm gonna always love you forever, but he just on his journey right now. Before then stating he will always have love for Contrell in an interview with Cigar Talk. My love don't change for people. My brothers don't have time where they have to journey apart. It'll come back together if it's meant to be, if not, hey. If I love you though, I'm not about to never not love you. Where the beef between Kevin and NBA Youngboy was resolved amicably before things could get out of hand, the same cannot be said for Scotty Kane who he got back into back when he was on his come up. Now, if you're not familiar with this artist, he's another MC from Baton Rouge who reps his own label called Utopia Music. During the beginnings of Youngboy's career, the pair collaborated on a couple of songs together, such as Homicide. I'm rolling around, I'm just waiting on you niggas. When I spot you, bitch, I got you. I've been waiting on you niggas. But according to Scotty, YB essentially begged him to do the song. Look, I'm gonna address the situation like a man, you bitch. Roll my cousin did. Yeah, I came to the studio. He begged me to do the first verse. I did not want to do it. I thought about him. I did the verse. Your bitch asked me to put some on your shoes. You not with my label. Nigga, you was over there riding TBG. Dick. They wanted to raw your pussy ass out. Now you put come trying to rap my for music. Now you get on and do all this extra. Shit. Always ready for smoke, NBA Youngboy pulled up to the studio to try and square off with Scotty. But the rapper had no intention of fighting one on one. And instead, he pulled a gun on Youngboy and apparently had him begging once again. But this time, it was for his life. However, as usual, Youngboy would eventually get the last laugh. When one of Scotty's studio sessions was ambushed by the NBA crew, and according to reports, Scotty lost 20 teeth in the attack. Since then, he's been real quiet and eventually apologized to Youngboy, claiming he shouldn't have even entertained the beef. Although a lot of rappers that Youngboy has beefed with have faded into obscurity after he was done with them, some have stood strong like Kodak Black. Back in the day, Yak and Youngboy were really cool with each other, and at one point, he even thought about signing Youngboy to his sniper gang label after collaborating on their hit song Chosen One. It ain't a thing I can't handle, I'm a champion. It ain't a thing I can't handle, I'm 
I'm a chosen one. But suddenly, either his words were taken out of context, or he just straight up disrespected NBA on the track Time Never Mattered, rapping. But I hope that I'm go broke again. Referring to Youngboy as a free agent, many thought he was throwing shade towards Youngboy for not signing with his crew. Although it's unclear if this was a diss, what I do know is that one of NBA's own artists was about to turn the heat up on this beef. Literally. Shortly after the song came out, Rondo Rondo, who will play a major role in a couple of the feuds later in this video, took an exception to what Yak said and did a live stream where he burned some of Kodak's sniper gang merch. After that, Yak's crew responded by releasing this threatening video of members from his sniper gang speaking in Haitian. <laughs> Before then proceeding to pour gasoline on Young Boy's Never Broke Again merch, claiming This meant that battle lines were drawn, and in October of 2019, Young Boy escalated it even further when he began dating Kodak Black's ex-girlfriend, Dej. But things didn't get too bad until a couple years later when Kodak was in jail. During that time, Young Boy was accused of snitching after his then girlfriend Yaya Mayweather st one of his exes. In the paperwork released at the time, it said that Young Boy had fully cooperated with the police. And as you can imagine, this was the kind of ammo that Kodak Black couldn't ignore. In a since deleted Instagram post, Kodak from behind bars said, The hell they mean you fully cooperated? Man, that word ain't even supposed to be attached to your name at NBA Youngboy. Don't do that girl like that, man. This sh make like you was scared them people was going to try to charge you with something, so you scream. For someone like Youngboy, who came from the gutter, getting called a snitch is about as serious an allegation against you as someone can make. And unsurprisingly, he went off. These niggas watch me from a jail cell, man. I ain't never paid attention to a nigga, especially from no cell, nigga. The nigga watching me fuck. Then what a nigga say? A nigga say, nigga say I corroborated. Bow, bow, man, bow, 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 what, you stupid bitch? Huh? Bow, 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 my wife? Huh? Bow, my wife say, I ain't here. Get up. Come here. You talking about it? You talking about this girl right here? My wife? You talking about my wife? Inside, inside my house that I paid for? Still, Kodak kept poking the bear, saying that YB was his son and that Youngboy wanted to be like him. Disrespected once again, the two were officially no longer friends. Later that year, Youngboy took a jab at Kodak by releasing his album on the same day. And to add salt to the wound, Youngboy's album ended up outselling Kodak's by nearly 15,000 units. Still, when Youngboy got captured by the FBI in 2021, Yak surprisingly insisted that he wasn't celebrating. This seemed like an olive branch and it probably was. And it also could have to do with the fact that a year prior, Youngboy released a song called Letter to Kodak where he said he missed him after he was sentenced to 46 months in prison. But there was still one thing bothering Kodak about YB and it wasn't anything street, but rather it was his fan base and their constant trolling. You guys remember how in 2021, it was a popular trend on social media for people to say YB better? Well, this really bothered Kodak and he made it clear in tweets stating, Bruh, I like young boy's music it's just this dude's fans homie or whoever the fuck is behind all this hashtag why be better sh that should be irritating and can't nobody else say they don't feel me a dude too real i ain't hating on nobody i just say what everybody else is scared to say with all chances of them rekindling their friendship ruined again young boy clapped back telling him if you don't like my fans i don't like you pussy as you can probably tell, a lot of young boys' beats start off as a case of respect gone wrong, and that's definitely the case with Anneli Choppa. When he first came out the gate, the influence of YB on Choppa's style was pretty obvious, and he didn't hide his fandom. At one point, he even dropped a song called Free Young Boy to salute his incarcerated hero, but unfortunately, that song would age like milk. It all started after Choppa got into an altercation with a member of NBA's crew in a club. As usual, it was Quando Rondo who said it off by attacking Choppa's friend. I just quack in there, little Choppa homeboy in this shit, running up on me. Hey, quack in the ass in this shit, 
and Ellie Chopper, and I got that found me, and I'm round, round Houston. And Ellie Chopper wasn't about to let that narrative fly and cleared up his side of events. And to him, what Quando did was cowardly. Good, how the f is you niggas took y'all hiding behind security, cuz? Y'all know what the f you did, you came and hid, hid behind security. You was a b. Suddenly, any chance of Choppa and Top working with each other anymore was pretty much over, but they kept it respectful enough until one day when Choppa decided to critique Youngboy's music online. After Lil Reese clapped back at a tweet from Academics, which said that Youngboy was on demon time by saying that he was just rapping like everybody else, Choppa agreed by saying that he stamped that. It's unclear what exactly Choppa's intentions were, but to Youngboy, this meant war. So he quickly retaliated on the track No like I know, where he said, I bet your mama will be destroyed when we send your stupid ass to God for making statements. Choosing sides about my beef with them little boys. You can say I was your favorite. Better stay up in your place, bitch around to get your face split. Just for good measure, Youngboy also dissed Choppa's new focus on health within his music, rapping, I don't give a fuck about how you treat your body, give a fuck about your cleaning. Considering how hard Youngboy went, you'd expect that Choppa had to fire back, but he insisted that he was above that. Is there beef there? Um, no, I don't beef with nobody. Like I said, I live in peace. I live in love. I'm saying it's, it's while Youngboy's candidness might have been seen as admirable, he didn't stop there. He went on to mock Choppa for his close relationship with his mother, who is both his manager and a successful entrepreneur. Youngboy even stated in his interview with Rap Radar that Choppa couldn't be a gangster because his mother wasn't. You gonna see a gun in his video, right? You go to the next one, he got a gun in his video, right? Man, you gotta dig a little deeper sometime, bro. All right, now look at his mama. His mama ain't no gangster, so how the f is he a gangster? That shit gonna be adding up, bro. You might have noticed in those bars about Choppa that he talked about him choosing sides. In a beef that brings us right back to one of the biggest beefs with another rapper that Youngboy has ever dared to enter, his feud with Lil Durk and the late King Vaughn. You see, Choppa was really good friends with King Vaughn, a Chicago MC who'd beef with NBA's most troublesome artist, Quando Rondo. During a fight in Atlanta at a hookah lounge, King Vaughn was killed by one of Quando Rondo's associates, Lil Tim. Since that went down, Quando believes that he's been blacklisted from the entire industry. While on Youngboy's part, he inherited the beef, beginning with a line on Bring the Hook from his January 2022 Colors mixtape that seemed to poke fun at King Vaughn's death and his hood. Nigga, this that squeak gang, oh, black peggy rolled up, metal what they told us, Atlanta boy get fold up. Over the years since Vaughn's death, Lil Durk has been criticized by some people for the fact that he hasn't slid for Vaughn. But when it came to this blatant disrespect, he didn't hesitate to defend his late friend's honor. In a post just days after Youngboy dropped the song, Durk let him know exactly what he thought of the New Orleans rapper getting involved. Don't claim it if you ain't do it. You still a bitch. With that, a war began, which has consumed the street rap side of the industry to the point that you're either cool with Youngboy or cool with Durk. Along the way, even baby mamas have been brought into the crossfire of it. As for disses, every new release from them usually has one or two bars for each other. On Ahaha, ah, Dirk raps. Like they really like that says my brody dad just get out the fans you bring up murders with your poly says once again a rapper has implied that young boy is a snitch and we know he doesn't go for that on the same track he takes aim at young boy's ex-girlfriend Janea michelle who spent some time with king von too i told von to leave that bitch alone she post our only for Youngboy, his shots have been no less than personal, but even more threatening. On I Hate Youngboy, a song dropped only a few days after Dirk's, he referenced Quando and even dissed Dirk's baby mama in the Royal, saying, Quando got no filter and he say that. They gon' f with him. Clean up on aisle O. Youngin let that chopper blow. My brother let that stick blow. No, that's my smoke. He called me a bitch. That's India. That be Yoho. Clean up on IOO refers to the O Block neighborhood that King Von was known for rapping. From placing billboards of themselves in their enemy city, to Youngboy officially turning his back on Drake for associating with Dirk on F the Industry Part 2. This is a beef that isn't going anywhere fast, and the two have made it clear that talks of reconciliation are completely false. As for Dirk, he made it clear that disrespect towards Vaughn is unforgivable, particularly when he thinks you're trying to gain clout off of his name. I'm speaking for the whole Chicago. You ain't there. Shut the fuck up. You weren't there. So you made a diss and said something about Vaughn. That's why, that's why I don't fuck you. You ain't did you. Zero. In reality, it just 
happened the way it happened. Like, it didn't even have, it didn't even have nothing to do with it. At the moment, Youngboy is still on house arrest in rural Utah, so things are contained for now. But considering how out of hand some of these beefs got when he was a free man, let's hope that Dirk and Youngboy decide to keep this thing on wax rather than taking it to the streets.